Welcome, everyone, to the Cardiac Wire Show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Cardiac Wire newsletter. And we have a great episode for you all today. We have Dr. Udo Hoffman. Uh, Dr. Hoffman is a radiologist with a, a long history, uh, both practicing and uh, leading research. And uh, we're going to be talking about the things that he's doing at Clearly and uh, some really interesting research projects that, that are going on over there. Uh, Dr. Hoffman, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jake. It's great to be here. It's really good to have you. Um, so I gave the, the really quick intro. Maybe you can give me a little bit more intro to yourself and your background and, and what you're up to at Clearly. Sure, Jake. Yeah, so um, as you said, I'm a radiologist um, by by training. I, I spent 20 years at Mass General Hospital. Uh, there I built a cardiovascular imaging program, both clinically and research. And we had a large group of people and did a number of randomized trials and also translational research um, in cardiovascular imaging, spanning PET, MR, but with a focus on CT. And so during that time, we also did a number of trials with uh, coronary CTA, which you know is kind of the new uh, imaging method um, that has emerged over the last 20 years as one of the only tools to directly visualize coronary disease. So you know, after this time in MGH, um, I saw the different challenge. And you know, Jim Min, uh, who is the CEO of Clearly and I, we have worked together and in the same field uh, almost parallel for the last 20 years. Um, and so he asked me to join Clearly because there's some very exciting stuff going on. And I looked at this for a while and then decided, uh, you know, this is uh, this is something that interests me. So now I joined as the chief scientific officer about a year ago. And indeed, uh, there is, uh, you know, a lot of exciting things that are going on at Clearly. I, Perhaps I give you and the, the viewers a little bit of uh, background on Clearly for those who are not as familiar with the company. Uh, you know, the, the backbone of the company is an AI-driven um, technology that uh, recognizes or detects coronary heart disease and uh, uh, characterizes plaques, stenosis, and other uh, determinants of vascular morphology and ultimately uh, determinants of clinical decision-making um, you know, automatically. Um, but the reason I would have not joined clearly if if it just would would uh, is it just a, an AI uh, tool company? Uh, Jim and I are really uh, aligned on the vision that what you know why we are excited about the technology. What really drives us is how is this technology brought to doctors and patients, and ultimately it can change outcomes. And I understand you have a new trial coming up. Um, that really talks about those two things, bringing that, bringing the outcomes to uh, providers and patients. Yeah, yeah, uh, great that you mentioned that. Um, so you know, clearly, really, I, I think of it as a healthcare implementation company that you know uses AI to facilitate that goal. And in that spirit, you know, we in cardiovascular medicine, you know, one of the biggest challenges is the prevention of cardiovascular events. And when you think about why that is, you know, there are so many initiatives, the One Million Hearts Initiative from the NIH, there's a number of professional organizations, AHA, ACC, uh, American Society of Preventive Cardiology, all of those are uh, doing excellent work in this field. But when you read year after year, the statistics, uh, you know, cardiovascular events and myocardial infarction is still the number one killer in this country. And the reason is because it is a silent killer. You don't know, you know, uh, hypertension doesn't hurt. You know, lipids, uh, elevated lipids, high cholesterol doesn't hurt. Diabetes usually doesn't hurt. So, uh, you know, all the risk factors are, are silent. And so that's why when you look at it, 50, in 50% 50 of patients, uh, myocardial infarction is the first manifestation of the disease. And I think that is is one of the reasons why uh, the prevention um, of these events is still, you know, I would say suboptimal. So having this tool available, we thought, uh, we thought about how we can help to improve the prevention of myocardial infarction and cardiovascular events in general. Um, 
Um, and so, you know, we we looked around and, you know, there is actually a field that is way, way ahead of uh, cardiovascular medicine, and that is cancer. You know, could you imagine that we would wait un until someone coughs blood, until we start thinking about lung cancer? Or could you imagine that we wait uh, these days uh, that a woman develops a lump in the breast uh, and then to think about, you know, detecting uh, breast cancer? No, you couldn't. But that is what we do in cardiovascular medicine. Essentially, you wait until symptoms occur. And then we still don't look for the disease, but we look for sequelae of the disease. We do stress testing usually and put a stand in. And it's just not working. So, you know, our goal is to bring, to elevate cardiac care to the level of cancer care by, uh, you know, doing risk stratification and subsequent treatment based on the detection of the disease and not of the treatment of risk factors. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It's really interesting. So, so how do you go about, um, I guess, how did you design the study to make sure that you're, uh, you're scientifically tracking the impact of this early detection and treatment? Yeah. So that's a, that's a good question. And it's, it's a challenge, you know, a number of trials have, you know, have compared you know, strategies where, where, image, where imaging is used to tailor medical therapy and compared to usual care. And most of these trials have not been successful because uh, they were kind of tentative. Um, and so in we call our trial transform because, you know, no pun intended, because we think if it's successful, it will actually transform the approach uh, to uh, the prevention of cardiovascular events. And the trial is designed in a way that patients are, uh, you know, randomized to usual care. Patients, I mean, patients who are asymptomatic, but who are at high risk for cardiovascular events. And those would be the ones with diabetes, prediabetes, or metabolic syndrome. That alone in the U.S. is currently about 100 million patients. And, you know, if you, there's probably no day in the news that you don't read about you know, adiposity, obesity, uh, diabetes is the new epidemic. And by 2020, 2050, it's estimated that the number is, is double, has doubled. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, a very large part of the population. So these patients, as I said, will be either randomized to usual care, where they where they being seen by their PCP and they're treated according to the guidelines, the HAAC guidelines, you know, which where you uh, look at the risk factors, you calculate your ACVD risk score, and then you treat accordingly. And the other half of the patients is randomized to what we call personalized care. And the care is personalized to your presence and extent of coronary artery disease. So all the patients in the study undergo a cardiovascular CT at baseline, but only the ones in the interventional arm this is where clearly we'll assess the CT and assign a stage, a CAD stage, uh, to each patient. So this is also taken from cancer because, you know, as you're probably familiar, cancer is staged depending on, you know, the volume and the size of the cancer and whether it has metastasized. And based on that staging, the treatment is very different. And so we take the same approach in the trial. We stage coronary disease and we treat uh, in, with increasing intensity uh, of, you know, with in increasing intensity based on stage. So stage zero is the least intensity, stage three is the highest intensity. So that is the personalized care where we personalize the treatment to the presence and extent of coronary disease. And then these patients are followed for a median of three and a half years. Overall, we will enroll about 7,500 patients. It's an event-powered trial, but based on our assumptions, that is uh, what we expect, um, you know, the the, uh, the population and the follow-up to be. And there is another nuance to the trial. After two years, uh, there is a second CT uh, where, again, it remains blinded in the usual care arm, and it's revealed and analyzed by clearly in the interventional arm. And if we see a progression of disease despite treatment, we will alter treatment. Um, so, you know, that's another new aspect here where not only you base your initial treatment, but also you check whether your treatment is successful um, 
with with cardiac CT. Now I should say that the CD we the trial in my mind the biggest challenge was how how do you align you know treatment of cholesterol and lipid lowering which is kind of the focus of guidelines with CAD. And so how we've done this is we use the coronary artery disease and clearly to basically provide you a, a baseline risk assessment. But then we set lipid lowering goals in these stages and they will be more aggressive. They become more aggressive the higher your CAD stage and your underlying risk of coronary diseases. And I think that is a way to bring these two approaches together instead of looking at them as kind of, um, you know, an oxymoron that, that is hard to, to combine. How can patients and providers get involved in Transform? So, you know, we're, we're very uh, lucky, I would say, and grateful to work with, you know, a great team of academic leaders together. So our PI is Deepak Baff from Mount Sinai. Our co-chair uh, is David Marin from Stanford. And our CRO that really runs the trial operations is, uh, you know, CPC in Denver, which is led by my good friend and colleague, Mark Bonaka, who was uh, at Timmy before. And so uh, this group in Denver, the CRO, they really uh, work with the sites uh, to recruit sites and bring sites on board. Uh, so you either can contact them, you can contact clearly, um, or there is a website, transformtrial.org, where you also can uh, get in touch with, with either the study leadership or with the CRO if you're interested to be a site. I, you know, a couple of things I, I would say uh, I want to emphasize to to your listeners that we're trying to achieve. One is we want to have a very uh, good representation of very different healthcare settings. So we can have healthcare systems, we can have academic leading sites, but we're going to have also very small site private practices in the trial. We also want to be diverse in terms of geography, and of course, one of our main goals is to be diverse um, in recruiting. Uh, racial and ethnic uh, minorities, as well as women, so that all of them have a very uh, adequate uh, representation in the trial. This is really impressive. You know, I'm, I've had the opportunity to work both covering radiology and cardiology, and you know, randomized controlled trials are, you know, the way it's done in cardiology, but in, in radiology, and particularly radiology AI, I haven't seen a lot of imaging AI uh, RCTs. So, Kudos to you. And I know you've talked a little bit about um, how you went about, um, I guess, deciding to do this, but is there, maybe you could tell me a little bit more about um, Clearly's research philosophy and, and maybe how that uh, led to this trial. Yeah, thank you, uh, Jake. Um, happy to do so. So you're, you're very correct. You know, most uh, devices are submitted with uh, with accuracy data or equivalence data. So, you, you know, really the focus is, and rightly so, the focus is on demonstrating that your tool, you know, does what it's supposed to do, it detects what it's supposed to do, to correct, uh, detect in a very accurate manner. And clearly has done a number of these uh, trials to uh, ensure, you know, that our tool accurately detects plaque and stenosis. We have compared it to uh, IVIS, OCT, to expert readers. We've also compared it to uh, tools that determine hemodynamic significance of stenosis, such as, uh, such as invasive FFR. So we've done that. But as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, our goal is really, you know, our slogan is a world without heart, heart attacks. And that may, may sound a little bit uh, big, you know, when you hear it first, but this is actually true. And I, I think we as a company want to do the trials that, you know, can contribute to uh, to that mission. And so then you really need to show how your tools, when they're put to work, you know, with physicians and patients, how they lead actually to improvement in outcomes, you know, and, and that is something you can only do in a randomized trial where you compare a situation where, you know, in this case, the clearly tool is available the output is available to physicians and patients uh, to a strategy where it's not, um, you know, and, you know, we're very optimistic. There, there's a lot of literature, you know, going back to coronary calcification, that patients are 
you know, in fact, not anxious when they see, you know, coronary disease that they have, but they're very, they become very engaged. Uh, they own, they own the disease. And, you know, it closes the loop to what I said at the beginning that, you know, MI is a silent killer. This is the only way to show a patient you have disease, you have to take it seriously. And it shows that patients, you know, are much more adherent to medical therapy uh, once they know they have the disease. And I, I think that's that's one of the mechanisms you know, on top of being more accurate in whom to treat and how to treat, but also engaging the patient uh, in in this path uh, to, uh, you know, improving health outcome, have health outcomes. So, you know, that is, a, I would say, that is how I would describe the, the, the research mission uh, of Clearly, to, to really do impactful research that goes way beyond just accuracy that, you know, includes patients and really addresses the, the questions that physicians and patients face uh, in this area. That's really impressive. And, uh, you know, the stuff that you shared to me around um, using this technology just to, not just to perform scans, but to transform how we prevent cardiovascular events is uh, it's really special. And the transform trial, it seems to me like the thing that, that we need to, you know, to really prove it and to get the medical community behind it. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how that takes shape. Uh, I really appreciate all the insights that you shared uh, today. To the audience, I would say if, if um, what Dr. Hoffman shared about Clearly uh, makes us you as a patient today or as a provider today, then reach out to Clearly. And then, of course, um, if you'd like to participate in the trial, um, she, Dr. Hoffman shared how to do that. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Jake. It was a pleasure to to be talking to you today.